knowing what you're eating is an act of changing the world. We have a very beautiful ancient text called the Tetri Upanishad. And it says, everything is food. Everything is something else is food. And it says food is in fact the divine. Because the minute you put food into you, that food is you. And that food didn't begin as food. That food became and began in the soil. It's a gift of microorganisms. It began with the sunshine. It's a gift of the sun. All of that life has been embodied in the food that becomes us. And when we grow food with care, and we know what we are eating and how it was grown, we nourish our bodies. Every cell of our body says thank you for giving me life. When we realize that we live in a web of life where all is one, we treat every strand in that web with love and care. And when we think we are separate from the earth, we think we are apart from the earth, we stupidly try and dominate over her. We try and treat her as an object and all her beings, which are sentient beings, as if they were dead matter. And we manipulate and torture and think there is no consequence. We allow violence to become the basis of our relationship with the earth because we think in that we are being superior by being dominant. But we were not meant to be conquerors and dominators. We are meant to be part of the web of life. It's very important in our everyday life to remember all is one. The web of life is a food web and yet Industrial agriculture and the meat industry is breaking that food web at every level, turning life into a commodity, generating violence where we don't need violence, and creating a food system that has become a curse for the earth, it has become a curse for human beings, and it is becoming a curse for future generations if you don't set it right. Industrial methods uses 10 times more water than ecological farming does because uh, it destroys the soil organisms, it destroys the soil structure, it uh, prevents the soil from absorbing the water, it compacts the soil with a heavy machinery which then runs off. All of the, this means you have to put more and more water into the agriculture. And that is why you have 75% of the water of the planet being used for agriculture. And then you put these animals into these prisons, which are also very water intensive in and of themselves. But you take what in a decentralized integration of livestock and crops and trees and people would be a harmonious relationship. You turn this into creating waste. In India, we worship the cow, and we even worship the cow dung, because it brings us soil fertility. But when you have 100,000, 5,000, 8,000 animals together, their waste now becomes a toxic waste, because they've also been fed too many antibiotics, too much of the wrong kind of thing. And then it's all in concentrated form, it's thrown into waterways, taking away even more of the fresh water of this planet. And everywhere where there are these animal farms, you have a stink because of the methane that it emits. What we have done with animals in terms of reducing them to pieces of cheap meat, pieces of cheap milk, has created a crazy situation. Europe is spending half of its money on agriculture subsidies and instead of cutting them down, it's telling people, give up your jobs, give up your pensions. You have to have austerity. And then, after making very costly meat and very costly milk, 
they then that subsidy makes it so cheap that poor farmers are dumping their milk in Brussels to show we can't afford to produce milk anymore. It's a system that is broken down at every level, ecological, ethical, social, economic. And it's being kept afloat by only three things. Our money, called the agricultural subsidies. Lies, which distort the real costs and the real price. And the stealing of our democracy so that ordinary human beings are not able to influence what will be the food that will become them. We are being robbed of our very being. Because if we are what we eat, then we should know what we eat. We should choose what we eat. And we are being denied that choice. If we are being denied that freedom, if we are being denied that knowledge, then we have been reduced to a giant planetary concentration camp where some species are ground up to be fed to themselves, like in the mad cow case. You might remember a few years ago, they took dead cows infested with BSE, ground them up, fed them to cows. Cows don't eat meat. Cows don't eat dead cows. And there has to be a moment we've got to shake up the system and say, enough is enough. You violated too many limits. No more. And what we are asking for is not in your hands, it's in ours. Because we can grow our food, we can cultivate our communities, we can rebuild local food econ economies, we can save our seeds. We don't need you to poison us. We can eat healthy and well by leaving other species free and letting them have their welfare while we increase ours. If we look at the chances according to human possibilities, human intelligence, human longing for good, decent food, I think the chances are extremely high that we could all live on a good, healthy, organic, plant-based diet. We would use less resources to produce more food. We would need more hands to work the soil because an organic soil needs care. A chemically farmed soil can be dealt with carelessness as if we were at war with the soil. When we have to give care, we need hands, we need heart, we need knowing minds. Mm -hmm. And yet, there is an industrial in a complex out there which has learned how to make profits at such a huge scale by torturing animals, destroying the soil, making biodiversity disappear. If you look at what's happening to animals in factory farms on the one hand, and you look at the fact that 75% of the bees of this planet have disappeared, then all of life is under attack. Now, a system that has got used to telling us that without their chemical fertilizers, there'll be no soil fertility, even though the soil fertility is the soil microorganisms, they will never let society know about the soil microorganisms. If there's a handful of industries growing GMO grains so that they can fool us into thinking that this is a solution to hunger when it's really part of the animal uh, torture complex. They will not allow us to know how much biodiversity can produce. They will keep us stupid, they will keep us ignorant, but most importantly, they will steal our democracies and our governments, and they're doing that right now. There is not one place on this planet where what people want is being allowed to become the law and the policy. Right now, as we talk, there are cases going on around the world where farmers are being forbidden to grow their biodiversity just because it would make us free. It would allow us to grow healthy organic food. There are laws being pushed in place to impose GMOs even though we know GMOs have not introduced yields, increased yields, and we know GMOs have risks. In spite of that, governments are turning a blind eye to science and telling their people, democracy from now on will mean a corporate dictatorship, which we will implement. While we collect your votes, we will collect their money. 
And from that money, we will then make sure all of you eat meat. You don't know what you're eating. You won't know if you're eating horse meat or beef. You won't know if you're eating GMO or non-GMO. We will make it impossible for you to have safe local organic food because we will deliberately make it more costly by putting all your tax money to subsidize the toxic food, the poison food, the long distance food, the food that should be beyond the reach of everyone. That big lie is the lie of industrial agriculture. For a while, they will steal our governments. In the long run, we will have to find ways to be healthy, to be free, to grow our food, to celebrate our lives. That's what I try and do through Navdanya by saving seeds. A very simple step. But in this totalitarian world, a world in which food itself has become the instrument of fascism, an instrument of war, in this totalitarian world, that little act of saving seed is a very big act.